In the case of reviewing donuts on top, patient is not a virtue. It's downright offensive at this point. My opponent has stated that no rights have been violated. As a matter of fact, there has been, which is not in their interest to present to you. In 2004, William Chow was a high-ranking official and had never inappropriately indulged in homosexual actions. Up till right now, despite his talents and experience, the army is seeking to get rid of Chow because of another personal because another personnel considers incom incompatible with military life. He has declared that he is openly gay, and now they want to get rid of him. He came on to conclude when he was discharged with a statement that said, that said, I could have written a statement denying that I was homosexual, but lying did not seem like the right thing to do. My roommate made the same decision, though he was allowed to remain in Iraq until the scheduled end of his tour. Whatever happened, whatever happened to fighting for ourselves? Who says we have to build separate tents like my opponent stated? Are homosexuals filled with plagues? Are they to be quarantined like animals, homosexuals, or grown adults? We are old enough to distinguish what is right and wrong. Women fought for their place in society. Homosexuals are doing it now. Times have changed. We are not to live in a world where a man who is gay cannot even fight for his country. Just because these men and women have different sexual preferences, there's no need to treat these human beings like a disease. These people are, are doing nothing wrong. Name their crime and I will be sure to defend your cause. In addition, actually 13,000 service members were discharged, not 9,000 like my opponent stated. Not only is this incorrect statistics, it tries to undermine the real truth here. My opponent also stated the purpose of the military was to serve our country. Homosexual individuals are no different than heterosexuals in defending the loyal cause. As earlier stated, the purpose is to fight and not to go and make relationships. Besides, are we glad to judge what is unhealthy or healthy? Not every gay has AIDS. My opponent has failed to provide sufficient evidence that every gay serving in the military has AIDS. But the real question here is, is there finally a plan in the works that might clear up the mess the White House has gotten itself into Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Maybe, at least if you take to heart the story coming out today that a group of activists, congressional leaders, Pentagon officials, and the White House staffers meant to get everyone on the same page. Hugh Carey, at The Advocate, who delivers the goods from Washington, she compared to her White House aides at a meeting all of these minds took place. She stated, according to one person familiar with the White House meeting, the pro proposal that is being considered would legislatively reveal the statute this year, but the current policy would remain in place, and implementation of repeal would not occur until the Pentagon's working group study is finished in December. Further, completion of repeal would require certification for President Barack Obama, Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, and Joint Chiefs. Mike Mullins, that the new law would not have a negative impact on readiness, recruitment, retention, and other key factors affecting the military. President Obama favors overturning the policy which bars gay troops from serving openly in the military. U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates has asked military lawyers to look at ways to make the law more flexible, held by gay rights groups as a safe, seismic political shift. President Obama also stated in his most recent speech, this year, I will, work, I will work with Congress and our military to finally repeal the law that denies gay Americans the right to serve the, the country that they love because of who they are. Even Solicitor General Elena Kagan, nominated by President Obama to replace retiring Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens, has called the military's ban on homosexuals a profound wrong and a moral injustice of the first order. Details won't be announced until later this week, possibly even tomorrow. <coughs> but could this finally put in motion the words that President Obama not only not only in the State of the Union address this year, but also during the campaign trial? Here's hoping. Sixteen years of federally sponsored discrimination to the tune of nearly thirteen thousand troops booted out of the military needs to finally come to an end.